From its source in the Tibetan Plateau, the Mekong River travels over 4,000 kilometers through six countries, eventually flowing through a vast delta in Vietnam into the South China Sea. It is Southeast Asia's longest river, home to more than 1,200 different species of fish. More than 60 million people rely on the river for their culture, livelihoods, and food security. Southeast Asia, however, is rapidly developing and hungry for power. The Mekong and its tributaries are being looked at for their hydropower potential. In China, the Mekong is known as the Lansan. Four dams have already been built, harnessing the river into a series of large ponds. Hidden away in the mountains is the tallest arch dam in the world, the Xiao Wan. At 291 meters, it is as high as the Eiffel Tower. But this is only the beginning. More dams are coming. It is only natural that many see the Mekong as being able to satisfy some of their growing energy needs. <laughs> Laos is a country rich in natural resources, but it is one of the poorest in the world. With years of regional and civil warfare under its belt, it's only in the last decade that it's finally coming into its own. People ask us very often why we choose hydropower in Laos. Well, it's very obvious that we have very large hydro potential. We consider that hydropower is clean, zero carbon emission, and renewable. Virafon Viravong is Laos's vice minister for energy and mines. He's an engineer by training. And Laos, for good reason, has ambitions to become the battery of Southeast Asia. Hydropower contributes something like 33% to the natural capital of the wealth of Laos. And if Laos want to leave the least developed country status by 2020, this is our only choice. Through hydropower then, Laos reasons it can get its own people on the grid and earn much needed cash from exporting electricity to its neighbors. 80 kilometers downstream from the UNESCO World Heritage City of Luang Prabang is the site of the Sayaburi Dam. Its development has proved controversial. If it is built, it will be the first mainstream dam south of China. Critics argue that it has the potential to significantly alter the Mekong's ecosystem, jeopardizing livelihoods and food security for millions downstream. Sayaburi will also be the first of a cascade of six dams to be built by Laos on this section of the river. The developers, however, are well aware of the challenges of building this mainstream dam and have redesigned Sayaburi to be what they call a transparent dam, a structure they claim will have negligible effects on the river. When you talk about transparent dam, in the case of, of Sayaburi hydropower project, it is a runoff river scheme. It means that the input flow is the same as the output flow. It's like having no dams there. So this is considered transparent. According to the redesign, the dam will also flush sediments, have navigation locks, and multiple fish passage systems to calm some of the controversy. We are using international standards for the development of the Sanyaburi power project. 
we have acquired international consultants with a lot of experience. Even though it is a little bit expensive, and these are the things that should comfort the people and the you know, demoing countries that we are doing in a very transparent way. Work appears well underway, although the Lao government claims they will not proceed with construction until all stakeholders are satisfied that international environmental and social standards are met. Despite the claims for a transparent dam, critics claim that Sayaburi will still impact the river. Cambodia and Vietnam have called strongly for a moratorium on the dam's construction until more studies can be done. And in Bangkok, Thailand, the destination of the Sayaburi Dam's electricity, Thai Mekong River residents are demonstrating. เราเพื่อเพื่อหยุดการสร้างเขื่อนของบริษัทชาวกัญชั่งนะครับซึ่งเป็นบริษัทที่เข้าไปสร้างเขื่อนเรียลิตี้ Sayaburi is mostly a Thai project with Thai financing, Thai construction and Thailand buying the power. ว่าแม่น้ําโขงปลาชีวิตคงรู้น้ําโขงกําลังจะตายนะครับต้องการสืบชะตาต้องการพลังใจของพี่น้องทุกคนนะครับที่จะต่ออายุนะครับพบปล
However, this kind of fish passage becomes less effective with increasing height. Once you go beyond 10 meters, as in the case with mainstream dams like Sayaburi, the job of getting fish to pass becomes more complex. According to the Lao government, over the past four decades, Laos has developed significant experience running hydropower projects. It points at the recently completed Tinhinbun Expansion Dam as a major environmental and social success story. The dam is built on the Nam Guang River and its main body reservoir is about 35 kilometers long. <laughs> Gome is a trader operating a small grocery store. She has lived in this village for over 30 years. <laughs> The company is relocating the village because of complaints of air pollution caused by the dam. The rotting vegetation in the new reservoir releases hydrogen sulfide, the rotten egg smell. The village has also experienced strong bank erosion and houses have fallen into the river when the spillway gates are opened. <laughs> About 4,000 people have been displaced by the project. According to the company, they are all entitled to an improved standard of living and a sustainable livelihood. Communities downstream are only helped to relocate and given partial support to build new houses. While communities upstream, who have lost everything to the reservoir, receive a golden package that includes a new house, water and electricity, and land to grow crops on. Sifan is 45 years old and the mother of nine children. She was working in her field when she agreed to be interviewed. Sifan agreed to a viewing of her new home, as long as she was given a ride back to the field so that she could continue her planting. The company provides a number of basic house models to choose from, though many modify them later on by adding a kitchen and other rooms. Health services and schooling are part of the resettlement package too. Mm -hmm. 
จงอาหารกันกินแล้วบอกคืออยู่บ้านเก่าของแม่ One problem for resettlers is moving from subsistence to a cash economy. In many cases, they never had to pay for water and power before. Now they have to find that money. Resettlement is tricky. People live near the river because there is good agricultural land. If they are moved off, it's more difficult to find equally fertile places. So they need support over time to help them adjust. The Tinhinbun expansion dam is considered a good resettlement project. There are other dam projects in Laos where the job has been done badly because not enough money or attention was put to it. Meng Sokling is the son of a Cambodian fisher. And this young man is determined not to follow in his father's livelihood footsteps. Instead, he is a student of dance at the secondary school of fine arts in Phnom Penh, a high school for the performing arts. The school takes promising artists as young as seven years of age. <laughs> Sockling is studying one of Cambodia's oldest classical dance forms. It uses stylized gestures and movements to express meaning and tell a story. This art form was almost wiped out by the Pol Pot regime in the 70s that killed many of the country's artists. On weekends and holidays, Sokling returns to his family home, about 20 kilometers outside of Phnom Penh. His father is able to support the family by cultivating rice, repairing outboard motors, and mostly fishing. Uh, Sockling earns money from fishing to help pay school and living expenses for the year.
For Sokling and his family, they are intimately tied to the natural cycles of the Mekong River for their survival. But as Cambodia develops, it's a way of life that is rapidly changing, and Sokling's mother is glad that he has found a way out. Historically, Cambodia and water management are hardly strangers. The civilization that produced the Angkor Temple complex excelled at fishing and the control of water, constructing dams, canals and reservoirs called barays that were used to irrigate their rice fields. The temples were built from the 9th to the 13th century on the edge of the Great Tonle Sap, the largest freshwater lake in Southeast Asia. Tonle Sap is a big one. It's 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 a big one. Chan Sok King is a fisheries expert employed by the Cambodian government. He has spent many years working in the Tonle Sap and the Mekong River. During the rainy season, the Mekong backs up and floods the Tonle Sap. It greatly expands the lake's surface area and depth, creating a fish breeding wonderland. <laughs> The Tonle Sap is facing enormous environmental pressures, especially with the tributary and the Mekong dams that are being proposed to meet the region's power needs. Cambodia has a serious shortfall of energy, with most electrical power produced by diesel fuel, creating some of the highest electricity prices in the world. High power bills significantly hobble the country's economic growth. The government has ambitious plans to close this energy gap with over 20 dams, two of which are slated for the Mekong mainstream. Today, Mekong fish provide more than 70% of the animal protein in the diet of Cambodia's population. Also, more than a million plus people earn income from the business of catching, processing and selling fish. As it turns out, the fisher knows nothing about the dams that are being planned upstream. 
Sensing the worry about the when we explain him about the dam in the Mekong River, he worry about the fish in the future because uh, and, uh, <coughs> he comes out the fishery. It's no fish, so he will uh, lose his job. Uh, but dams, energy and economic development are complicated issues. And unsurprisingly, many people have some sort of opinion about them, one way or the other. Here, at the Krechi Dolphin Pool, 200 kilometers north of Phnom Penh, silence is golden. If you want to hear the sound of an Irrawaddy dolphin breaching the surface of a deep water pool, no motorboats, and certainly no talking is allowed. A critically endangered species, the Irrawaddy dolphin is almost extinct in the Mekong River, with slightly more than a hundred of them left. This is the natural treasure of Cambodia that, you know, is unique, it's is unique after Angkor Wat. And our government want to look after that and then try to conserve, you know, the dolphin in the Mekong River. Just north of this deep water pool, however, are the proposed sites for the two Cambodian mainstream dams, the Sambor and the Stang Treng. The dolphins range from the Krechi Pool north to the Lao border. These dams will fragment the dolphins' habitat. Bun Ma is a boatman. He takes tourists to see the dolphins. He knows about these dams, and he knows that they may or may not be built. Bunma has a pragmatic attitude about what these dams mean for himself and the dolphins. Hydropower projects on tributaries are just as problematic as damming the mainstream Mekong. Like Cambodia and Vietnam's joint 400-megawatt dam located near the junction between the Saisan and the Srepok rivers in Cambodia's northeast corner. The Lower Saisan II dam project will flood at least 30,000 hectares of forest and farmland. Its reservoir will come to the very top of this bridge. The dam will displace about 5,000 villages, many of them indigenous minorities. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> 
Most of these villagers practice a form of spirit-worshipping animism. It's an important part of their daily lives. Bitun is a full-time fisherman in the village and a part-time spokesperson. He was elected by the village to communicate on their behalf with the government and the dam company. Bitun, however, is finding communication hard going because neither the government nor the dam builders seem to want to talk to him. Building dams is a complicated business, and many times the people living at the project site are the last to know the details of how it's going to impact them. If the Lower Sesson 2 dam goes ahead, it alone will be responsible for some 9% of predicted fisheries decline arising from dam construction in the Mekong. Scientists say this could have serious impact on food security for the region. The status of the dam, however, is still unknown. For Bitun and his community, this lack of information only adds further uncertainty to their already uncertain lives. Back in the capital, Phnom Penh, Sokling has managed to obtain a weekend gig to help pay his school expenses that does not require a boat and fishing net. He and his fellow dancers have a club date and they are excited to try out a new choreography that's a mixture of classic Khmer and modern street dance. When the classical monkeys hear the techno beat, they are captivated by the modern sound and embrace it wholeheartedly. Life on the Mekong, after all, is all about change and ultimately about survival.
Thailand has a long history of environmental awareness, and over the years, its citizens have become sophisticated at fighting a good environmental fight, especially when it comes to building dams. But these fights are tough, often producing mixed results with many casualties on both sides along the way. Sompong Viang Chan started out life as a fisher, and then because she felt she had no other choice, she became an activist. Little did she realize that more than two decades later, she would still be fighting for her way of life. ฉันเป็นคนหาป่าอาชีพหาป่าตั้งแต่กําเนิดอายุ the Moon River is located in northeast Thailand. Five and a half kilometers upstream from its confluence with the Mekong River, the Pak Moon Dam was built. It took three years to construct and became operational in 1994. ต้องกลับไปที่แผนพัฒนาเศรษฐกิจและสังคมแห่งชาตินะคะของรัฐบาลเมื่อประมาณ The Pakmun is operated as a run-of-the-river dam. It is designed to generate electricity a few hours a day to serve peak power demands in the region. It was in the early 90s, at the start of the dam's construction, that Sompong and many in her community made the decision to fight. They wrote letters, they did sit-ins, they marched on parliament in Bangkok. Two decades on, Many of the dam's environmental and social issues are still unresolved. According to the World Commission on Dams, things started to go awry in the 80s, well before the dam's construction began. The Tana Rapids of the Moon River are an important spawning ground for fish. It was this recognition in the initial environmental impact assessment that persuaded the government to relocate the dam further upstream. The dam was also redesigned to reduce the number of households that had to be moved from an estimated 4,000 to a mere 248. This was a commendable move on the dam builder's part, according to the World Commission on Dams. เขินปากมูลเนี่ยเป็นเขินที่สร้างขึ้นโดยขาดการมีส่วนร่วมของภาคประชาชนและเป็นเขินที่ได้มีการจัดทำเอไอเอแบบไม่สมบูรณ์แ
On top of that, the new location was not given a second environmental impact assessment. จากการศึกษาพบว่าจำนวนชาวประมงที่ได้รับผลกระทบจากการสร้างเขื่อนปากมูลนี่นะคะอย่างน้อย 3,000 The fish ladder was installed as an afterthought, and with almost no research conducted to consider what type of fish would be able to use it. จากแม่น้ำมูลเนี่ยกว้างมาจะให้มาขึ้นแค่ตอนนี้ตับปลาอะไรอีกวะโอ้ไรหรอไรบ้างแค่เส้นนั้น 6 เส้นFish decline, however, can't be blamed on the dam alone. Other development issues like deforestation and increased agriculture and industrial pollution add to the problem. Climate change is now also stressing the ecosystem. Besides using the dam to generate power, the government also set up an irrigation system to help the impacted fishers grow rice. มีเป็นมติคอนมอเมื่อปี <laughs> คือที่ที่ผมบอกเรียนไว้ก็คือว่าเรามีกระบวนการให้ประชาชนมีส่วนร่วมระหว่างการก่อสร้างBut not everyone is satisfied with the irrigation scheme. Rice growers have to pay for the electricity to pump the water, and many find it too expensive. ไม่มีกินก็อาศัยนานเก้าสอบติดสอบปุ๋ยอย่างนี้แหละมันไม่ได้เกินกุ้มมันไม่มีงานอะไรจะทำมันก็ต้องส่งลูกไปกรุงเ
คือตัวนี้เขาแรงมันยากเมื่อไฟฟ้าพาดไปแล้วพวกเขาเปิดปั่นไฟได้ยินเสียงหัวเมื่อกี้นี่บางครั้งกระน้ำมาก่อนบางครั้งก็เสียงหัวมาก่อนมันจะไม่สัมผัสกันสังเกตตอนนี้น้ำมาแล้วนี่หัวเพิ่งเปิดนี่มาแล้วนี่น้ำมาแล้วเมื่อเวลาไม่นานเมื่อสักพักหนึ่งนี่ก็เริ่มรั่วขึ้นมาแล้วนะมันก็เริ่มเคลื่อนไหวไปเรื่อยๆแล้วก็ทำให้น้ำเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดเปิดมันสอดมันมันมันไม่สอดคล้องกับการอพยพปลาที่จะขึ้นไปวางไข่ตามลำน้ำหมูแม่น้ำตะกาต่างๆ But at the end of the day, everyone wants electricity. We want to see in the dark. We want jobs, and we want to buy things. There's nothing wrong with that, but the question remains: to turn on the lights in the big city through hydropower, what is the real cost? Especially when you factor in the impacts to those living in the country close to a dam. I'm not trying to say that we should stop using the lights and start building the infrastructure. But what I'm trying to say is that the lights that are used to build the infrastructure that has been built are not enough. It doesn't ไม่มีความไม่มีประสิทธิภาพในขณะนี้เขื่อนนะที่ประชาชนจำนวนมากเดือดร้อนเช่นปากมูลนะฮะปากมูลผลิตไฟฟ้าทั้งปีนะฮะประมาณหนึ่งหนึ่งร้อยหกสิบล้านหน่วยเ,เรามีห้างสรรพสินค้าสามห้างในกรุงเทพคือพารากอนมาบุญครองแล้วก็เซ็นทรัลเวิลด์ใช้ไฟฟ้ารวมกันถึงประมาณ270วันล้านหน่วยซึ่งเขื่อนปากมูลเขื่อนเดียวไม่สามารถจะป้อนไฟฟ้าให้กับ3ห้างนี้ได้ห้างสรรพสินค้าเหล่านี้สามารถทำให้มันมีประสิทธิภาพได้มากกว่านี้โดยที่คุณจะไม่เสียอะไรเลย Please don't misunderstand me that we will develop only large hydropower projects. You can see from our strategy on renewable that we will do everything to facilitate the development of all these renewable, including small micro hydro, any other alternative forms of energy and things like that. We have signed the Mekong 1995 agreement. We have issued the environment and social environment impact decree. We have done most of these things to show our willingness to learn how to develop hydropower in a responsible manner. In 2001, the Thai Power Authority agreed to open the Park Moon Spillway four months of every year, so that people in the community can fish. Once the gates are opened, fish appear in the reservoir above the dam within 24 hours. It's been some relief for the local fishers, but not enough. Many in the community simply wish the dam be decommissioned. 
returning the area more or less back to its natural state. And then everybody can get on with their lives. <laughs>